Okay. Um, welcome everyone to this month's Persia webinar. As you are no doubt aware, today we are very happy to welcome Nazila Fathi, who is a former New York Times correspondent. Uh, we hope that you're now able to um, join us on our page and everyone has connected. Um, my name is Tahir Danesh. I'm the executive director of Persia Educational Foundation. And it is my pleasure to be with all of you, including our presenter this afternoon. As you may have seen on our website and through our social media, including our page on Eventbrite, um, Nazila Fathi is an accomplished author and journalist. She has written a number of uh, publications that have um, attracted a great deal of attention and have um, been a testimony to the caliber of her work and contribution as a writer. Today, however, um, despite her illustrious past in the world of uh, storytelling about politics and culture and all matters that um, have to do with insight and intelligence and interpretation of the world that we go through, she is here to speak to us, uh, perhaps more so in her capacity as a mother. She um, wrote, uh, decided to write a number of books that invite children um, into fun stories, teach them history, and let them become part of the adventure and uh, picking strong role models to follow in their lives. Um, Nazla Fathi has a master's degree in political science and women's studies from University of Toronto and is the winner of three fellowships at the Harvard Kennedy School. Um, she has written um, fantastic children's books that she's going to tell us about. And we want to thank her again for taking the time to work with us over the past few weeks to prepare for this webinar. And we're joyously delighted to um, welcome her to, as one of the speakers of the Persia webinar series. So without taking any more of your time, um, here we are with um, Ms. Fathi. Nazila John, thank you again for joining us for this webinar today. Thank you so much for a very kind uh, introduction. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you and talk about the books. Thank you. Um, well, as you know, Persia Educational Foundation is a UK-based charity that is entirely focused on education of the Iranian population in UK and beyond, um, and provides scholarships to individuals who look to give back to their communities, particularly through public service. So um, having individuals such as yourself is um, simply um, an added benefit to the work that we offer the community. Um, the first question that I wish to start with is, do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey as an author? Um, well, um, I started uh, out as a reporter uh, and uh, I was based in Tehran and um, I was, I, in my early 20s when I started uh, working with American reporters and they always came to Iran uh, looking for the same cliche stories, uh, whether there was political freedom in the country, uh, whether how, how far uh, women were being repressed. Uh, and then there were all these pictures of black clad women uh, marching in the streets or men holding uh, their their weapons uh, to show that radical face of Iran. And for me, that wasn't the country that I knew because I had grown up um, behind closed doors uh, that had maintained a very lively culture. Um, we had our own private lives. And then outside uh, was a battlefield for us as younger people to fight fight the restrictions that the government constantly imposed on our lives. And so I became interested in telling stories from Iran, from inside the country, but telling the stories that showed that true face of the country. Uh, and that was the beginning of my journey as a storyteller. 
uh, I started writing about younger people. I started writing about women authors. I started writing about musicians, underground musicians. Uh, I wrote about gays. I wrote about transsexuals. And these were the people that you couldn't meet and you couldn't tell their stories uh, unless you lived in Iran and you knew them closely. Uh, so that was my, my journey as a storyteller. They were received very well. People came back to me, a lot of scholars outside the country came back to me and wanted more information to write books about some of the uh, stories that I had written. And they were just a thousand words or 2000 words. And there were other people who wrote books about them. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people I wrote about, they found their paths elsewhere. They got scholarships, they left the country. Uh, they were able to leave the country, get asylum. So those stories changed lives. And I, I realized that storytelling has a lot of power. Uh, just not to introduce a country, not to show the different layers of the country, but to educate people. And when I became a mother, because I was always a lover of stories myself, I started telling stories, my kids, stories that I made up spontaneously just to put them to sleep. But I, there was always a message in there. And I realized that my kids, if I told them not to do something, they wouldn't listen to me. But if that message came in a story, even if it was like a makeup, spontaneous stories, they picked up the lesson better and they did accordingly, they did well. So as they grew up and as we left the country, we left Iran, we, we were in Canada, then we moved to the US, uh, we moved between uh, several states. Um, I realized that I, I wanted them uh, to know more about their country of origin, about their mother country. Um, and so I started introducing um, certain figures to them that I thought was important for them to know. For instance, they had friends uh, whose names were Dariush, Darius, uh, Kurosh, Cyrus. And I asked these friends, do you know what, who you're named after? They didn't know, they just said, well, I knew it was, he was a king. I knew Darius was a, a prominent king, but that's not enough. I mean, uh, they've done things that they have changed, not only the course of a country, they have uh, changed the nations. They have contributed to human civilization. And I thought it was important for our kids as Iranian Americans, as, uh, as dual citizens, to know that about their culture. Otherwise they grow up without the kind of confidence that they need to have because they are immigrants. They, but they have this uh, rich culture and civilization behind them that can transform the way they look at themselves and, uh, and their culture. So uh, as, my teenage, as my kids started becoming older and they weren't interested in these stories anymore, I decided just to write them um, and published them. And that's how these books were born. Well, you've, you've done a marvelous job because, um, you know, they're beautiful books. Um, and I've heard so much about them from um, some of the individuals, either teachers or, um, um, you know, individuals who are running community schools or, or parents talk about them. So, um, how do you think that your experience as a journalist, in, in particular, contributed to you becoming such a strong storyteller and doing such a marvelous job of really, um, as you mentioned, um, embodying specific lessons, perhaps on character, on behavior, through the work that you have put together in these books? Um, that's a hard question. Um, yeah, I've always been a reader. As a kid, I read a lot. I've always loved good stories. I didn't like bad stories. Uh, I wouldn't spend much time on reading stories that aren't told well. So I wanted to tell a good story. I don't know if my experience as a journalist, as a writer helped, uh, but I think for anyone who wants to get a story, uh, to tell a good story, um, it is just about knowing how you can engage uh, a listener or a reader. So I tried these stories on my own kids. If they liked them, if, if, it, if they engaged my kids, I knew uh, they would engage others as well. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about 
each of the books that you have written, um, the character that they emphasize, um, as well as some of the lessons that perhaps, as you were saying earlier on, that um, whenever you wanted to teach your children something, if you told them it wasn't as effective as when you um, presented it to them in, in the body of a story. So do you want to tell us a little bit about each of the books and what um, lessons and characters they embody? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. Uh, even though I didn't pick these uh, uh, characters just based on the message that I wanted to give because they give very different messages. Like um, this one, Cyrus, uh, my name is Cyrus. I couldn't think of any other person that I could write about uh, that would embody uh, the sense, the feeling that we have toward uh, Cyrus. Uh, I think for Iranians and, and even for other nations who lived under, were part of the Persian Empire, uh, Cyrus uh, is, is the liberator, is somebody who has given Iranians um, um, the sense of pride uh, that we feel toward our culture. Um, and, and there are a lot of kids named Cyrus without knowing that. Uh, so I, first of all, I wanted to tell them who Cyrus was and what Cyrus embodies as a person, not just for Iranians, but for many, many other people. You, you come across people from Eastern Europe who named their kids Cyrus. Uh, and that's just because, I mean, the name is still in their current culture. They're so proud of this uh, person. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I do refer in the book uh, that even uh, for the founders of America, Cyrus was a person that they considered. Um, his contributions, uh, I mean, in, in reality to uh, the human civilization, to human rights has been so great that it inspired uh, Jefferson as well. So, I mean, for me, it was a no brainer that there should be a book about uh, Cyrus, why we call him Cyrus the Great and what has made this figure uh, such a permanent uh, person in the history of our country, even though, you know, uh, empires have come and gone. Uh, and the only books that we have from Cyrus, the only things that we know about Cyrus are written uh, by, by the enemies. Uh, Iranians have not written anything about Cyrus. Whatever we know is written by the Romans and by the Greeks. Uh, and that tells something that even the enemies of uh, Cyrus couldn't say anything uh, negative about him. So that was no brainer. But um, Abu Ali Sina uh, or Avi Sina and Razi, uh, for me, they were um, people who can set our kids on a path to hard work, uh, resilience, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a life that setbacks wouldn't disappoint them. And that's why I, I told uh, their stories. And the, 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 the opening scene uh, in the book, uh, Avicenna, is the, is the scene that Avicenna is in a fire. And for anyone else, you would think that this, this incident would discourage them, uh, would uh, send them to a place where they would never follow their dreams. But this guy, uh, followed his dreams and he became a very, very prominent uh, physician and um, of course many other things, but his contributions to, to medicine is, is so great that when you visit MIT, uh, his name is up on the wall and they call him the father of modern medicine. And I thought every kid should know that, every kid who wants to go to uh, MIT should know that his name is up there and he has to look for it. Um, Razi, again, similar character, he co contributed a lot. And I wanted um, Iranian kids to know that there were a lot of people who contributed to medicine, astrology, uh, to, to chemistry, to so many things that, uh, you know, the world has benefited from. And my, my next book, which is going to come out hopefully by the end of the summer, is about two women. And, and I thought it is very important for our girls to know that Iranian women uh, have always had power. Iranian women are very different mm -hmm. uh, than women in other cultures in even neighboring countries, even in Europe 
at a time when women were not allowed to own land. Uh, they didn't have uh, freedom to, to move. Uh, Iranian women could do anything. Uh, at that time, they were, call, they were called Persian, Persian women. Uh, but they belong to the same land, they belong to the same culture, and perhaps uh, that is why Iranian women are as strong as they are today, because their ancestors uh, were very strong women who accomplished a lot. So my next book is about uh, a Persian queen, a Sassanid queen, and about a, a Persian warrior, uh, a female warrior. Uh, who actually fought against uh, the Arabs uh, right before the fall of the Sassanid Empire. Fantastic. Just out of curiosity, how have these characters um, inspired your work and affected your development as an Iranian? I'm, I've always loved uh, history. Uh, I've read a lot of history books, not just uh, about Iran and Persia, but I mean, I've been fascinated with history and I think they lay the ground for the future. Um, people who don't know their history, they don't know anything about their country, about their civilization. So I was a big reader, but as I started telling these stories, I had to dig in more into the nitty gritty uh, of, of, of life uh, during the period that, you know, these characters lived, uh, especially for the, for the drawings and uh, for the graphic work, I had to look up and see like what kind of clothes women wore uh, under the Sassanid empire, what kind of clothes men wore uh, under the Arabs and what language did they write? I mean, those really uh, small things that you have to put yourself in that period so you can tell that story. Or like, for example, when these scholars were traveling to Baghdad. What, what, what was it in Baghdad that they liked? Uh, why was Baghdad such a beautiful place? How was it different than, for instance, uh, than Ray, the city uh, where Razi was born and grew up and then he went to Baghdad and found Baghdad to be the most beautiful place. And there was a reason for it because they had urban planning. These cities were built really beautifully, even though uh, they were developed uh, under Arab rulers, but they did try to make them the most beautiful place they knew of. And when these scholars went there, they fell in love with these places. They wanted to stay. And when they went back to their own uh, uh, cities, they wanted to copy back that. They wanted to bring all the good things that they'd seen in those places. Mm, fantastic. Um, well, um, I think I think you're, from what I've heard from some of the uh, individuals have used your books to read to children in, in community schools or in, in Persian um, community events. Um, although the books are not in Persian, they're in English. They, they've been um, very impressed with the way in which you have told the story. There is storytelling and then there is storytelling. So um, from, from the reception so far, the manner in which you have mastered the art of storytelling um, it really comes through in these books. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the place of storytelling, both in, in, in Iranian culture, as well as perhaps your craft as, as an author um, and, and the impact that you feel it, it may have for the younger generation? Well, Tyrejo, that's really, really nice to hear because uh, no one can claim that she or he is a good storyteller. Uh, this should come from uh, the listeners and the readers. So it is really, really nice to hear that. Uh, thank you uh, for, for echoing that a message. Um, I, I'm, I'm really honored to hear it. Uh, that's the best compliment, the best review that I can get. Um, and if I have accomplished that, um, thank you. That's the best thing that I can hear, the best reward. Um, as I said, I tried these stories on my kids. Uh, if, if I saw they were engaged and they wanted to hear more, um, you know, I continued. If, I, if it, they didn't engage them, I came back to them from a different angle. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to uh, keep their um, interest in the stories. Uh, and, you know, frankly, they are my, my editors now. Before I uh, finalize any story, uh, I ask them to read them. 
and if if they don't read it all the way to the end i know i have failed and i go back to the stories and and rewrite them and try to find uh, a different angle to make it interesting and it takes a lot of writing and rewriting and rewriting um, and my kids i owe a lot to them because they read them uh, and if if they're not if they don't like them i know it doesn't work well, that's that's been uh, you know the feedback that I shared is something that we have heard. But what about you, you know for yourself? Um, you know what has been the the response? What um, how has the reception been so far to the books from what you've experienced along with your agent and your publisher? Uh, well, you know I published these books myself, uh, so I'm the agent, I'm the publisher, <laughs> I'm everything. Uh, but I have to say, um, I, I am very happy with the response because the books came out just a few weeks before uh, the pandemic. Um, and so I, I had only one event. Uh, all the sales have been online, mainly through Amazon. Uh, and even though I didn't have time to market these books in, in the real world because everything, everything went online, uh, I, I've been very happy with the response. Um, I, I do look forward to a complete reopening when I can meet people with these books uh, where there can be events and we can talk about them and I can get feedback from people. The only feedback that I've had has been through people like you, which is very limited. Uh, I do look forward to a real reopening, uh, but the sales have been relatively fine. Um, if people have liked the books, I really encourage them to leave reviews because that's what I need and what's, uh, that's what we all need as Iranians to, to introduce these books to others. Um, I've tried to keep the prices um, really, really low. Uh, if people are interested in reaching out and getting the books, I will go out of my way to provide it to them as low as possible. Uh, and, you know, my intention has always been uh, to educate our kids uh, in an environment that has not been very friendly uh, to Persian history or Iranian history uh, for valid reasons. I mean, we live at a time that um, uh, there are many, many uh, other versions of the story that are coming out that are not very friendly toward Iran uh, or even our Persian history. Uh, so we need to help one another and uh, we need to encourage telling these stories on a much larger scale. Yes, exactly, yes. To be able to really allow um, the next generation to access um, the other side perhaps of, of what is Iran in history and identity, which is which is quite essential to creating a sense of uh, diversity for our children, because um, they are third generation children. They are not raised in Iran, um, and it's important for them to be able to access uh, the reality of what what our culture is as much as possible from far away. So, exactly. um, in that light, then. Um, one of the things that we had discussed earlier when we were preparing for, for the webinar was your unique perspective on, on um, the important issue of um, uh, Iranian history and historians and um, the importance of realizing who has written um, about our history in the past and who perhaps should be writing about our future. Would you like to say a few words about that? Thank you uh, for remembering that. Yes, I, I think it's very important uh, for um, Iranians to tell Iranian stories, uh, partly because our history, even our modern history, uh, has been written mostly by non-Iranians. And you know, it's, it's as if I come here to the United States and I decide to write a book about John F. Kennedy, about Bill Clinton. Who wants to read my story? But when foreigners write about the Shah, somehow we like those be books better than, than when those books than those, and those stories are told by, by Iranians. Well, you know, some people say, well, because foreigners write the stories more objectively. 
Well, we should do that. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, our kids uh, at any age have very little access to any readable history that can tell them about their past or their modern uh, ancient history or about their modern history until they get to university. And at that level, they have to read quite sophisticated scholarly books. And um, I think it's important for our kids to start getting familiar with at least, at least part of their ancient culture and uh, history at a younger age. And we need, we need to tell these stories in an engaging way. We can't force our kids to become interested in something that is not interesting, mm -hmm. uh, in books that are not engaging. So this is our responsibility to find an interesting way of getting them engaged uh, in these issues. Um, otherwise, it's not their fault. It's going to be our fault. Yes, yes. And, and I think um, now that you have um, taken the time to produce these uh, fantastic resources, really, for the younger generation to learn about these historic and, and globally acclaimed characters, as you mentioned, for instance, Cyrus, his contribution to um, the world of rights, in particular, the right uh, to movement and the right to belief um, that are embod embodied in the, in the Cyrus Cylinder. Um, and is just as important as Magna Carta in terms of oh, establishing yeah. uh, modern human rights or the contributions of Avicenna or um, you know, some of these other characters that you're now in the process of writing about. Uh, it's, it's really uh, important for the development, holistic development of the younger generation to have access to these books. So would you like to tell us, remind us how we could order these books? Um, the books are all available on Amazon, uh, almost everywhere in the world, even in Japan and in China. <laughs> uh, uh, if anyone is interested to get them in larger numbers, uh, they can get them for a discount. They should, they, they should feel uh, comfortable reaching out to me. I would be more than happy to help them uh, to, to get them in larger numbers um, and for much, much lower prices. Uh, um, I would be more than happy to speak to uh, the kids if, if they are the audience. Uh, I have given permission to uh, some places to perform uh, the stories, um, and I would be more than happy uh, to do it with any other group or foundation that is interested in doing. Um, as I said, my intention is just to get more kids, uh, read these stories, know about them, not just Iranian, non-Iranian kids as well, because you know there is a generation that is in their 50s and 60s, and uh, they know uh, what Persia is. Uh, but there's a younger generation that they don't know if Persia is an edible or if it's a, uh, it's a thing. What is Persia? A Persian cat is a name to them. Mm. Uh, they, they know nothing about Iran and Persia. Uh, and so I, and part of the reason is because we are such a young immigrant community. Uh, Iranians did not immigrate in large numbers until the 1979 revolution. But other immigrants, immigrant uh, communities in the US uh, and in Europe, they started immigrating much, much earlier, definitely from early 1900s. And they have already established themselves. They have their schools, they have their curriculum, and they are raising kids that are more familiar with their uh, country of origin, uh, but we're still very young. Uh, and I hope there are other writers, there are other uh, entrepreneurs who would come forward with new tools for, for our kids to get familiar uh, with their culture. Yes, that's, that's an excellent point about the difference between um, the, the age of the Iranian diaspora community and, and others. And, and that in itself, that awareness with the younger generation would probably give them the confidence to not only be, be um, grateful for the background that, that we all share together coming from, from Iran, um, which in itself is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious community. It's, it's, a, it's a 
globe in miniature in a sense exactly of the diversity of languages you know um costumes um culture cultural practices poetry uh, clothing um artifacts um jewelry the way we we you know we may say we make you know this is persian food but there are so many different ways of making the same dish depending on what part of iran come from so um, understanding and appreciating the fact that we come from such a diverse nation is, is in itself a boost to the confidence of the younger generation and would perhaps Absolutely. encourage them to want to read more about this. Um, we received a couple of questions from individuals who um, um, have uh, been interested in your um, uh, webinar. The first question that we have received is, what are your suggestions for someone who's just starting to write children's books? Um, do it. We, we need a lot of uh, children's books, uh, but try them. I mean, read the stories for kids around you uh, and get feedback from them because uh, I think, for any book, uh, you definitely, as a writer, uh, you want to get feedback from your audience. And if you're writing a children's book, uh, so your audience uh, is going to be kids, uh, read the stories to them, get feedback if they like them, uh, become more confident and proceed with your project. If, if the story doesn't engage them, see how uh, you can change it and make it more engaging. Wonderful. Um, a second question we have received is how do you encourage your children, or I suppose our children, they meant, to want to learn about their parents' culture? Uh, well, uh, that's hard. That's really hard. It has to be interesting. It, I mean, the culture has to be presented to them uh, in an interesting way. I mean, do we become interested as adults? Do we become interested in something that is not interesting, that is not, uh, I mean, we don't have curiosity about something that is not interesting or engaging. So to trigger their curiosity, we have to present uh, the culture to them in an interesting way, whether it's a, a place, whether it's a character, whether it's a dish, whatever it is, it has to be fun for them. So let's make everything fun for them. That's, a, that's an excellent point. And I think um, that particular insight that you have offered begets the commitment of us as, as sort of the parents' generation to um, provide the resources necessary to, to present these historical glimpses and historical characters in a manner that is engaging. We have a large body of Iranian artists um, Iranian filmmakers, um, Iranian um, animation experts, Iranian video game makers um, who may or may not be interested in this topic, but we know for a fact that Hollywood uh, has been interested and has drawn on, on Iranian history in a, a number of different productions. And so this question might encourage the parents also to reflect on um, how do we encourage ourselves, really? How do we empower our own selves to want to present and share our culture with not exactly. our own children? But um, in, in the early exchanges we've had together, you've pointed out something very important, which is, you know, we learn about characters from other cultures um, in, in our schools and in our environments. Why not the Persian culture, you know, which has been really one of the uh, sort of the pregenitors of, of the global community that we know today. So yeah. why aren't we presenting it? And, and why are we, um, I suppose, not complementing the not so positive image that we may find about Iranian um, history and um, individuals, figures, characters that really fill um, the media sometimes? So why aren't we making the effort to you know, present the other side. So this question, I suppose, I hope that the, the person who's asked it doesn't mind that we would suggest that um, that's an excellent question, but also we as parents have an obligation as you have demonstrated 
to exactly. new and creative ways of sharing um, our culture with the children. Um, there was one final question we have. Someone has asked what language or languages are, uh, are your books available in? Well, the books are available in English. Um, I, I have two of the books in Persian, uh, but because the books are published outside the country and on demand, uh, I wasn't able to publish them. I mean, Amazon has been saying that uh, they will make uh, on-demand printing available to, in other languages, but it hasn't, uh, it, it is not available yet. So the books, because I heard from uh, Persian schools outside the country that they would be interested to have the books in Persian. Uh, and so I made sure that they were uh, available in Persian too. So I have them ready. They will go into print as soon as Amazon can print them. Uh, for now, they're just in English. Wonderful. And and am I correct in, in am I recalling correctly that your book was, was um, um, listed by the Library of Congress and it's, it's uh, stored in, in perhaps various important libraries around the world? Yes, um, uh, Cyrus the Great's uh, book, uh, My Name is Cyrus, was cataloged by uh, the Library of Congress, which was a great thing. Uh, some libraries are getting them. Uh, as I said, this process has, was very slow because of COVID. Uh, and, I mean, I was going to present them at so many p museums, uh, but then the events were uh, canceled. Uh, because of uh, everything that the entire world has gone through over the past year and a half. Uh, but I'm hoping that uh, those events are going to uh, happen now that uh, we're going back uh, into the real life again, and we are not going to be just on Zoom and online. Um, yes, uh, and a lot of Persian schools in the U.S., I know they have, uh, they have, uh, purchase the books and they're using them. Um, it's it's been a very good positive response, and it it makes me really grateful uh, to our our community all over the world um, that they responded so positively. So thank you. Fantastic. Um, how do we get a hold of you if we want to be in touch with you? If we want to uh, follow your work in this regard, would you like to share your um, website URL and your social media handles. Uh, of course, we will reflect them um, again through uh, Persia Educational Foundation's uh, social media as well. But would you like to just, in conclusion, um, remind us of how we could follow your work both on website and social media, please? So I have a website uh, for my work uh, where I have other books that I have written for adults as well are listed. That one is nazilafaiti.com. I have a book for the children's book. It is called susainc.org. I will type them and send them to you. Uh, that one is only for the children's books. I have a blog uh, where I post blogs that I think are interesting for the community and I suggest ways of engaging kids in in topics that can lead them to become more interested in, in their history and in their culture. Um, I, I am on Twitter uh, under my own name, Nazila Fati. I'm also on Facebook, Nazila Fati. And there is a Facebook page for the books, which is a uh, book for, uh, let, let me have to check it again. I think book for Persia or Gonna have to send it to you. Um, Perhaps if you wanted to give us your your Instagram handle as well while you're looking, and then we, you know we, we we will include them again in our social media. But it's wonderful if you could just hear about uh, your Instagram as well. Yeah, Instagram is Nazila Stories, and the Facebook page for the books is Book for Kids of Persia. Book for Kids of Persia. Wonderful. So um, as I mentioned, some of these have been included in uh, Persia Educational Foundation social media um, in advance of this webinar to promote Dear Nazila um, and her work. Um, we will include it again. Um, I want to thank you once again, Nazila John, for taking the time out of your busy schedule um, to be with us. We're grateful to you that you've taken the time um, with your dear children to produce these important books. 
Um, they're fantastic resources, as I mentioned, for teachers, for individuals who are running community schools, community language schools. Um, I know uh, a couple of um, individuals who are grandparents who've made sure they have bought these for their children so that the children, for their grandchildren, so that they have them and, and they enjoy them. So thank you very much for all you're doing to, to promote these important figures in a language, uh, both in terms of uh, making it available in English and the way in which you have told this story, making it available for individuals to relate to. So thank you again for creating the books. Thank you for taking the time to be with us this afternoon. And we're grateful to you for um, your contributions to the advancement of Iranian culture throughout the globe. We look forward to having you again, and we look forward to promoting your work as much as possible through Persia Educational Foundation. Sayyidun, thank you so much. It was a true honor to be on the program, and thank you for everything that you are doing. Our pleasure. See you soon, hopefully. See you. Bye-bye.